actually hit record, you dummy. Earlier this year, with the help of a friend, I was able to secure a Sony a6500. And while I mainly got this camera for its video capabilities, I also wanted to learn its photo abilities as well. The current pandemic allowed me the perfect opportunity to learn this camera in low pressure environments. And I'd like to take some time to go over a few of the things that I learned about going from Canon to Sony. Hi, I'm Larry G. I'm a portrait and lifestyle photographer based in Louisiana, shooting from Baton Rouge to New Orleans and everywhere in between. For the greater part of two years, I've been shooting with a Canon T7i, and I've been able to get some amazing results out of that camera. However, earlier this year, I was presented with a need for 4K video to land a second shooting job consistently with a company that I'm working with. Right before I put it out into the universe that I was going to need a 4K camera, my friend Dylan, who's the co-owner of 320 Studio, seriously, go check them out, offered to sell me his Sony a6500. I agreed, we worked out the details, and I am now the owner of a Sony a6500. Before I dive into the rest of the things in this video, I want to preface this and say that this is not a review. I will not be going over technical aspects. I will not be reading off spec sheets. Um, if you guys are interested in things like that, there are a lot of other videos on YouTube where you can watch that or do your Google searches and find that information. This video is more for my opinions and how I've learned to deal with certain things that go with switching from Canon to Sony. First up, the aesthetics. This camera is obviously smaller than the Canon T7i. Going from a Canon DSLR to a Sony mirrorless, both APS-C bodies, the form factor shrunk a lot. One of the main things that you'll notice in this size difference is the grip. So on Canon DSLRs, the grip is very pronounced. It's very large. You can hold it. You really feel it in your hands. Whereas on the Sony's, although they've gotten better, they're still quite small. Now, my hands aren't that large, so it's not that much of a problem to me, but if you have larger hands, that may be something to look out for. Coming from the Canon Rebel Eye line, you'll notice that the flip out screen is a very uh, noticeable thing. Whereas on the Sony's, you don't have a flip out screen. I can't exactly see myself when I'm filming this video. However, I've used the Sony app and other apps like it to monitor my video, to monitor what's in focus and what's in frame. And while it is a minor inconvenience, it is not something that has made me want to not use this camera. The final thing is buttons. Now, while I don't completely agree with the placement of the video button on the Sony camera, I will say that having custom programmable buttons on the camera is an added bonus and a well-liked feature for Sony. Next, let's talk about those menus. Canon menus have been great and have steadily evolved with time to be even more great. It's even better that now they have the ability to be touch screen. In this older Sony camera, the menu system is not touch screen and it is a little difficult to navigate. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Everyone has talked about Sony's need for menu upgrades. Thankfully, with the release of their new A7S III, you'll get the touchscreen functionality and an updated menu system. But that's not the case in the Sony A6500. So, while the menus are a little difficult, they're not that much of a deterrent if you take the time to learn it. Next up is everyone's favorite topic, color science. So for a long time, I'd heard that Canon's colors were just better. I've watched reviews, I've seen different examples of work, 
And what I've come to as a conclusion is that if you take the time to learn how to manipulate Sony colors, you can still get great, rich images out of this camera, especially if you're shooting raw. While Canon's colors may look wonderful straight out of camera, you may have to take a little more time and precision when editing the Sony files. That's not to say that Canon's colors are better, they just may appear better straight out of camera. One of the main differences I've personally experienced from Sony cameras is that Canon colors seem to be rich, while Sony colors seem to be a little more punchy and edgy. Anyone who takes the time to learn how to properly edit the photos will be able to achieve very similar looking photos, whether they shoot Sony or Canon. It's all a matter of learning how to adapt your skills to a new file. When it comes to shooting with specific glass, I have one Sigma lens for Sony. The rest of my glass is Canon. So in order to use it, I purchased an adapter. Now, I did not purchase the most expensive adapter, but I did purchase one that should work with autofocus. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Beware of adapting glass if you're not going to get a more expensive adapter. You may have lens to body communication issues and you may have to work through that. Once it does work, the results are amazing. I love adapting my 50 millimeter lens to my Sony body. It just, there's something about that look that just makes it so much better, so much cleaner. I'm not going to say that the Sony is completely sharper, but I will say that it provides an excellent quality sharp image for an APS-C body. If you're enjoying this content and you've stuck around so far, please consider liking the video. It really helps out my channel. And if you really enjoy my content, consider subscribing for more weekly videos. Now I'd like to get into showing you some specific examples on where I think this camera has done me justice. In this next set of images, I shot at night. It's complete low light. It was rather dark. I think it was 10 p.m. here, and it's quite dark. But as you can see in the images, the colors are still very rich. I was still able to get a decently sharp image in low light. There is grain, but the grain is minimal. It's not as bad as it would have been on a different camera. This set of images I shot in midday. If you look at the sky, it was gray and overcast, but still pretty bright. And I was able to grab those highlights and bring them back to life. This is the power that I've been working with in this Sony camera. This camera being smaller than my T7i has allowed me to put it in different situations that my T7i just would not fit. I've been able to get close to the ground. I've been able to get different angles and different shots that I don't believe I would have accomplished if I had a larger bodied camera. Speaking to that form factor one last time, having a camera this small makes me want to bring it everywhere. It can fit in a small bag. It can fit in my wife's purse. I can even carry it on my shoulder and it's not that heavy. It's not that much of a burden to carry around. It can also fit on one of the smaller Joby Gorilla Pods so that it's not tilting or leaning. Just be wary of using heavier glass or heavier glass setups. Overall, going from DSLR to mirrorless is a learning curve. Going from Canon to Sony is an even bigger learning curve. But if you take the time to learn your gear and learn how to work with the files, you can achieve some amazing results and switching is not that hard. I've already touched on the form factor, the color science and the image quality. These are things that can be managed if you take some time to learn them. The 4K video is what sold me. And while this was initially a trial run, I've made my decision to switch from Canon to Sony. I'm currently in the process of selling my Canon T7i along with my Canon glass 
so that I can purchase a new Sony body and Sony native glass. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Which do you think is better, Canon DSLR or Sony mirrorless? Have a great discussion down in the comments and please be respectful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps hit the bell for notifications. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys next week. My name is Larry G and you can believe that.